Ivan Stupin. Well, there, here he is. Here he is. He's come out onto the stage. So he's ready. Maxim Muller down the Ukraine. He could still be scrambling behind <laughs> the scenes for uh, for his gum shield. Who knows? But uh, Stupin, I've seen quite a bit in, in ring B. Squeezed past Harris Akbar of England in the semi-finals. Akbar, the number one seed by unanimous decision. I thought he was fortunate to get that one, Stupin. I had Akbar winning that fight. It wasn't one-sided. I wouldn't have said, but I scored that one to Akbar, but, but Stupin got it. He had a tight one against Otto Noderiani of Georgia in the previous round as, as well. So I think he's had the rub of the green with, with the judges in his last couple. But as I said, with reference to Clancy, you take that because sometimes you won't get it. Sometimes there'll be ones you think you should have got and you don't. And Muller down to number two seed with, with Ukraine. Beat Emerson of Iceland, Aliyev of Azerbaijan by unanimous decision. Against Sebastian Terry in the Denmark, he got that one 5-0. I thought, I thought Terry was unfortunate there. That was a very, very close fight. Then he knocked out the Italian number three seed, Gianluigi Malanga by unanimous decision. Again, a close, close fight. Beat Lorenzo Sotomayor in the Istanbul Bosphorus tournament, previously known as the Ahmet Koma earlier earlier this year. He's boxed here before as well in the in the Euro Youth since 2018. So I'll make this i make this a good match. Indeed. Ivan Stupin in the red corner. 2016 European junior champion in Hungary. New national team member but very experienced. Maxim Molodan actually returning to Olympic style boxing after a stint in the pros. Made his de pro debut in December 2018, then boxed in March and April of 2019. Since September 2020, he's been exclusively operating in the territory of three three-minute round Olympic style boxing. And here he is in the gold medal bout in the 69 kilogram final of the European Under-22 Championships. That's the man in blue, the former pro. His opponent is Stupin of Russia wearing red. Orthodox and Southpaw mixing up and you see a nice Southpaw left to the body from Molodan. And he's banging away with that left hand, but the forearm providing a defense. But that final right hand to the body did get through from Molodan. So plenty of physicality in the early stages. A Stupin trying to get over that front foot and look for the left jab. Sl slinging a left hand to try and get himself off the ropes with Molodan. Good left hand to the body once again from the man in blue. He's picked his shots effectively in the first minute of this round to his opponent's body. And there you see him targeting the body shot once again. Cleverly tying his man up repeatedly and preventing Stupin from establishing his own range. You see him trying to gauge the distance with that lead left hand. He hasn't found it with any success yet. And in the meantime, look, he takes a shot to the sternum from the southpaw left of the Ukrainian boxer. Another tangle on the inside once again. So fencing with the lead hands, pushing him off now, he's stooping to try and get the range that he requires to establish his left hand. But look at the marauding forward march of Molodan. Now onto the back foot before springing out of his own corner and scoring effectively to the body of the man in red once more. So Stupin's being presented with a bit of a difficult puzzle here. The rhythm of Molodan is proving challenging for him to get into grips with. He's whipped in a right hand to the body there and then a good right hand over the top from Stupin. Good left hand to the body once again from the man in blue. And again, Stupin not doubling up that jab. He's falling short with it there. He did get his man to the ropes, dipped his knees, scored with an overhand right to the body, then followed it up with a whipping right hand by turning his palm upwards. So good body sh so shot success from Stupin in the previous 10 seconds or so. I think he's just been outworked and outscored in the action we've witnessed so far. Hasn't been clean, it hasn't been necessarily tidy, but punch picking like that, that right left again to the body, and then the final left hand shot upwards. There's a nice counter right hand from Stupin. So he's having his moments, 
but I just think for my money there were far more moments for the man in blue over the course of that first three minutes. I would agree. Uh, I think Mulladan took that round courtesy of that of that body punching. Stupin is a kind of fighter who does look to try and establish that jab and he'll look for that backhand as well. But when you see him set up, and this is something I noticed over the previous few days, he does kind of he holds those hands high and the elbows are out. So the the rib cage, the torso, that definitely is exposed. And Mulladan has managed to time him so far, get onto the inside quite comfortably at times and then find the body because it is such a wide open, wide open target and the judges reflect that. They've gone 10 lines for Maxi Molladan across the board there. So a good, a good start for him. I think with Stoopy with his style, he needs to be a little bit busier. He has got kind of rangy shoulders on him, quite the long reach. If he's gonna throw that jab, he needs to throw it more, throw that one, two more because otherwise he's just gonna invite Molladan to come in on him. Well, Molladan made a point of getting to centre ring first and immediately went for the one-two to the body of the man in red, which he did immediately afterwards. Now, the, Molladan's supporters here trying to rally him and he's continuing to stab away with that southpaw left. There's a solid left jab upstairs and then a looping right to the chin of, of Molladan from Stupin. But look at that left hand to the body in, respo in response. And it brought about a bit of a reaction from Stupin. It just doubled him up momentarily as he, before he disengaged. And this isn't where Stupin wants to be. He cleverly fired in a right hand before spinning off. Stupin, again, with that huge boulevard between his elbows, just presenting an enticing avenue for that type of work there from Molladan. Continually targeting the torso of the man in red and invariably finding the range. The body doesn't move as much as the head. A stooping scores with a combination. A minute gone in the second round. And now he scores with a spearing straight right to the peck of his opponent. But remember, there is an edge in age and experience between these two. As again, Molodan digs in a hard left hand above the belt line. Stupin just glancing to his corner. Tries a right hand, but it was slipped by nice head movement. And Molodan just wrapped his man up around the waist before shoveling a couple more punches into Stupin's body. There's a good right hand to the body in response from Stupin. It was of the long, looping variety. Trying to close the distance, but again, the rhythm at which Molodan fights just seems to be perplexing Stupin. Hitting on the break there, that's one way to find somebody against whom you can't pick up their, their rhythm. Good right, left landed on the inside from Stupin. And Molodan, while well, he's breathing through an open mouth here now, accuracy isn't what it has been for the preceding session of this contest. Good right hand to the body once again from Stupin as Molodan looks to tie his man up. Another furtive glance over his shoulder from the man in red. And Molodan is his gas tank beginning to run empty here. He backs up to the ropes, inviting the man in to try and counter. But I think there's a great deal of posturing going on here, looking busy, doing not very much indeed. As shots being sunk in and now Molodan wilting before our very eyes. He's got 16 seconds before he can make it back to his corner. He wills himself forwards but he appears to be running on fumes in the closing stages of this second round. Oh, there's a cracking right-left combination from Stupin. And Molodan, well, it's a good thing he didn't have far to walk back to that blue corner because I'm not sure he would have made it. Slumps down onto his corner stall. And what a dramatic fading we witnessed from the man in blue in the closing stages of that round. Now, was it soon enough? Well, clearly not for the judges because Stupin, he's taken it 10-8 for one judge, 10-9 for judge one. Maxim's early work taking it for the other three judges. Yeah, I think they're bad scores from the other three judges, to be honest, because what you're looking for here is, is who wins the, the, the round on, on the balance of the of the tonnage of punches they, they throw, if you like. You put one tonnage on one side of the scales, the other tonnage on the other side. And Molodan in the first two minutes, yes, he did find the body. He was pecking away at the body, solid little shots. But in that final minute there, Ivan Stupin has belted him around the ring. Let's make no mistake about it, he hit him with a massive uppercut. I can see that 10-8 from Austria. I can, I can see the 10-9. The 10-9's the other way, no chance. 
So into the third and final round then. Has that 60 second interval been enough for Maxim Molodan's energy levels to recover? He's leading 20 points to 18 for three of the judges. So he's got a pretty big insurance policy. But if he keeps walking on to uppercuts like that, he may not make it to the end of this third and final round. Remember, Stupin came on so strong in the final minute of round number two that he took it for two of the judges, one of them by a 10-8 margin. And if he can do that as he lands with another cracking straight right against the Southpaw, who is again just looking to claim his man and cling on. It's been a dramatic decrease in his energy reserves. Look at how he's struggling to maintain his boxing stance. This is a big opportunity for Stupin. Can he keep his composure and measure his work, not smother it, and prevent Molodan from holding on, spoiling and killing time, which is all he's looking to do here. This has become a survival mission. I think we've got a cut over the left eye. Let's keep an eye on the referee. Well... There's a cut to the eye of Molodan. His problem's mounting. And I think it was caused by that coming together there. So if this cut causes the contest to be curtailed, I believe we'll be going to the scorecards because it wasn't inflicted by a punch. But Molodan, if he didn't have enough to deal with, now he's... Oh, there's a beautiful right uppercut once again and the referee stepping in and issuing a count. Practically two minutes to go in this third and final round. And the manner in which Molodan's energy levels have dipped is alarming indeed because this is what he's been reduced to now. Clinging on, trying to survive, whipping right hand into the body of Molodan from Stupin who senses his opportunity to overturn the deficit that he faces. And Molodan's got to watch that he doesn't get Dr. Point for holding because look, he's looking busy but I don't think he's doing very much at all. Breathing through an open mouth, he can barely maintain his boxing stance. Stupin looking, looking for that uppercut once again. And all Molodan is doing is killing time, trying to spoil, trying to survive. So the referee, well, that's a timely intervention to allow the bootlace to be adjusted on Molodan's shoes. But of course, while he's recovering, it gives Stupin time to recharge his batteries as well. Minute 10 to go and look at that for an uppercut. Action has resumed in lifestyle here at the Pala Maghetti. Can Stupin continue to find the quality to either get his man out of there or produce the 10-8 rounds that he needs? There's another right hand. Molodan, to his credit, is looking to remain competitive, but look at how that right hand to the body doubled him over. He whipped it in bolo fashion. It sunk into the man's solar plexus and hinged him at the waist. Terrific shot, and Molodan, well, he's running on empty here as he ships another right hand to his solar plexus, running across the ring to try and wrap him up like a blanket. And I think he's walking a tightrope here, is Molodan. Because he's blanketing his man at every opportunity. Right on cue, he looks to tie him up on the ropes again. And he's perhaps fortunate that he hasn't been Dr. Point because it's an aspect of boxing, but this isn't boxing. This is survival. This is spoiling from Maxim Molodan. It looks as though he's going to make it to the final belt. But Stupin is no mistake. He's won this third and final round. Look at that. That's what you see on the offensive line of the gridiron field. Charging at his man, blanketing him to prevent him from working away. And I think this is going to be intriguing here now because we had a standing count, but in Olympic-style boxing, that doesn't necessarily mean a 10-8 round as it is in professional boxing. But I think you can make every case for Stupin having a 10-8 round in that final three minutes, which would make the scorecards very interesting indeed. First of all, I don't think there's any question that the man in red won the final round. No, no question at all. I hope he gets a 10-8 that he needed because for me that was an easy fight to score. Molodan won the first round, Stupin won rounds two and three. Yes, Molodan did well in the first half of round two, of round two but in the second half he got beaten up. Easy fight to score, Stupin rounds two and three, okay, Molodan yeah. rounds two, one. The Russians should get this. Well, dear me, I think Ivan Stupin's expression says it all. How can you score that final round in favour of Maxim Molodan? That's what's happened on the scorecard of one judge. He was given a count. He was rocked repeatedly by uppercuts. And I think that's a very telling expression indeed. Ivan Stupin, desperately unlucky 
not to be crowned champion here. Remember, there is an appeals process available and the Russians may well look to exercise it at the conclusion of that gold medal bout. It's Maxim Molodan who has been declared the champion. I don't know what to say, to be honest. Rounds two and three were clear, clear round wins for Ivan Stupin in, in my mind from what I saw.